Up and down the ballot, Donald Trump has scrambled just about everything that could possibly be scrambled in this election. In Ohio, for instance, the state where their popular sitting Republican governor refuses to endorse his party's nominee for president, both party Senate candidates are blowing up the typical turnout strategies and building new alliances as they try to appeal to voting members of the other party. In a new poll from NBC News, The Wall Street Journal, and Marist, incumbent Republican Senator Rob Portman leads his Democratic challenger Ted Strickland by five points, 48 to 43. It's a close race, which might be part of the reason why Strickland, the Democrat, has started running an extraordinary TV ad that highlights his biography, but also leans heavily on issues that might as well be straight out of Donald Trump's mouth. The first in his family to go to college, his dad worked in a steel mill. His brothers finished concrete. That's why he's fought against every bad trade deal, from NAFTA to most favored nation status for China. Now Ted Strickland is running for the U.S. Senate, calling for a moratorium on all new trade deals until we can prove they'll create American jobs. I came from a, a working class family. I will always fight to make sure that working people have a fair shot. Ted Strickland, Ohio, heart and soul. So that's the Democratic challenger trying to appeal to Trump voters. On the other side, incumbent Senator Portman and the Ohio Republican Party are making a concerted effort to turn out moderate Democrats and other Ohio voters who, if Trump ends up not winning, would be the ones most likely to vote a split ticket vote for Clinton and Portman. Joining us now to talk about this dynamic and Senator Portman's efforts is Washington Post reporter Karen Tumulty, who wrote an article about all of this for the paper and here in the last news cycle joins us from the post newsroom karen thanks for coming on great to be here what what is unusual about the tactics that senator portman and the ohio republican party are using to try to find and, and motivate clinton voters or other democrats well, the most unusual thing I found was that uh, after the Democratic convention, when Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine took their big swing through Ohio, Portman's campaign actually dispatched volunteers to go to Clinton and Kaine events to hand out literature that touted his endorsement by unions that normally um, go for the Democrats, like the Teamsters. They were posting things on their Facebook and Twitter pages. You know, here are our volunteers at the Clinton rally. So uh, it is it is rather extraordinary. But as you said, those poll numbers would suggest that it's working for Portman. A month ago, both the presidential race and the Senate race, that same NBC, Wall Street Journal, Marist poll showed tied. In this case, there's a five-point lead that's opened up for Clinton and a five-point lead that's opened up for Portman. Portman has got some moderate positions, uh, most prominently probably coming out for same-sex marriage uh, a few years ago. What makes the Portman campaign think that this can work, given that all the literature and academia shows that ticket splitting isn't that common anymore? Well, it, it isn't that common. And in fact, in 2012, it was as low as it had been in 90 years. It was in more than 90 years. Only 6% of congressional districts in this entire country voted one way for their House member and another way for president. But a lot of people are arguing that that trend could actually could could change this year, in part because Donald Trump is so unpopular. And a lot of Republicans, a lot of moderate voters, um, for the first time in a long time, people are talking about strategic voting, which is almost like the unicorn of politics. It's where you vote for one party for president and you vote for the other party as a break on the president. Yeah. So they are counting on the fact that essentially both tickets are headed up by relatively unpopular people, which scrambles everything all the way down the ballot. Yeah, uh, it's Donnie, picking up from your article, I think 6% of congressional districts went the opposite way of the presidency in 2012, and going back to 72, it was 44%. I think there is going to be a landslide direction in split ticket for the exact reason you said, because even the folks voting for Hillary, they're doing it begrudgingly. And I think there's something emotional that's going to happen in the voting booth, both candidates, because no matter which way you vote, most people are voting begrudgingly and go, you know, screw it. I don't care, and just as a reflection, go the other side on the lever. And I, I think we're going to see that in record proportions here. Now, of course, the wild card is that people just may be so turned off by this election, they don't show up at all. Mm 
And that could also hurt somebody like Portman in Ohio, because it's most likely to be the moderate Republicans who don't show up at the polls. But, you know, in Ohio has not voted split ticket in a Senate race and a presidential race since 1988, when they voted for George Herbert Walker Bush for president and Howard Metzenbaum for the Senate. So Portman is definitely running against recent history here. So in Ohio, as we said, we see Portman and Strickland, the challenger, both trying to look for crossover appeal. There are other competitive Senate races where these dynamics might also be in play. Take Pennsylvania, for instance, where their new NBC News Wall Street Journal Marist poll there shows the Republican incumbent Pat Toomey is trailing his Democratic challenger, Katie McGinty, but just by four points in a race that Republicans have long known would be a problem. Florida, there's a new Quinnipiac poll that shows uh, the former presidential candidate, incumbent Senator Marco Rubio, now running for re-election to his Senate seat, leading the Democratic challenger Patrick Murphy by three points, 48 to 45. And in New Hampshire, a recent WBUR poll shows the Republican incumbent Kelly Ayotte is down 10 points to Democratic Senator Maggie Hassan. So, Karen, real quick, will other Democrats, uh, other Republicans rather, you think be tempted to do what Portman has done and try to find Democratic votes to save themselves? They absolutely have no choice. But the problem becomes when you have a situation like New Hampshire, if the bottom just flat out drops out of the presidential nominee, Donald Trump, you do find yourself in a sort of Kelly Ayotte situation where even if you're outperforming him, you're pretty far behind.